I don't know what your testimony is, but the Lord has helped El Shaddai. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. So now notice when the Lord helped them, look at why. And so the Philistines were subdued. Their enemies were brought under subdu uh, subjection. And they could not come anymore into the territory of the children of Israel. Why? And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines as long as Samuel was alive. Oh my goodness. As long as the children of Israel had a man of God watching over them, the enemy could not come into their life or terrorize them because the hand of the Lord, the anointing that was on his flesh, repelled their enemies. So anytime you say, I don't need a pastor, anytime you say, I can just go everywhere I want to go, anytime you choose to be a floating tour because you are part of the body, come on, but you detach from the body, everybody, listen, a man of God is important. Just like it is even better to make a bad decision than not make a decision. It's better to have a bad pastor than not to have a pastor at all. Yes, sir. Just in case you think I'm preaching so I can be your pastor. Make sure you just got one. But check this out. The enemies couldn't come into their territory because there was a man of God and the hand of the Lord was against them. As long as, that is, that is the key, as long as Samuel was alive. Which means when Samuel died, you've read the Bible, they were terrorized again. But as long as Samuel was alive, there are certain things that should not be happening at your house. Because I'm going to show you. Because you are connected to this anointing. Come on, come on, Every household can come under attack. But you are under the banner of El Shaddai. And the God of Ramson Mumba. Okay, come on somebody. I'm going to leave this a lot. Can defend your house because you are connected to this anointing. Can you say amen? Okay, now, we don't want to build a doctrine on one scripture because the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let what? Every matter be established. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. I want you to check this out. The prophet Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. Amen. Look at the children of Israel, the testimony of this prophet. He said, by a prophet, the Lord brought them out of Egypt. Now, when he says the prophet here, they only had for the ministry gift in the old covenant, the office of the prophet. They didn't have the other four. Right. So it literally means by a man of God. Right. So by a man of God, God brought them out of every situation. I got news for you. The only reason you're going to come out, well, you know, I just need me and God and then we'll sort this out. I got news for you. Faith comes by hearing. Yeah. And when you study it in context, it doesn't come by hearing while you read the word to yourself. Amen. He's saying, how can they go unless they are sent? And how can they be sent? Come on, somebody, how can they preach unless they be sent? So then faith comes by what? Hearing. So faith comes by hearing the preached word. When the word of God comes out of my mouth, I'm preaching you out of your depression. So when you feel sad, you bring yourself so I can drive that depression out of you. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you need some bills paid, you sit yourself on that chair and let me fire you up with that. No. Okay, come on. Hey, hallelujah. And I know you, you, you think, why is he excited? Because I've been preached out of all kinds of things. By a prophet, he brought him out. When they say you got an impossibility, that's not the time to disconnect. That's the time to show up. And you're just like the centurion. Speak the word only. I'm just looking for the place where the man of God is about to release the word. Because by that word, he's going to bring me out. He's going to carry me out. He's going to take me out of bondage. Hallelujah. He's going to make my family whole. By that word, he's going to raise up my children. By that word, he's going to bring wealth and riches in my house. Oh, come on, somebody. By a prophet. So contrary to the lies of the devil, you don't need to disconnect when you're in trouble. That's the most important time to show up. With tears in your eyes, you still show up because any time God can release a word, any time God can put a word in my man of God's mouth, 
No, I know you are used to some men that are not anointed, but I know what I'm talking about. I have seen this anointing change people's lives. I'm not just preaching a story. I'm talking about an anointing that has produced intangible. Oh, come on, somebody. Undeniable proofs. I'm not telling you about being a millionaire. This anointing has already produced millionaires. This anointing has escorted people out of debt. This anointing has made people walk and the blind have seen and the lame have walked and people got all kinds of things. And, woo, okay, okay, okay. I told, I told myself uh, that's how it's going to bring you out. By a prophet. You could go to church and be in a dry place for years. Like the children of Israel walk around for 40 years when you could go through in 12 days. The difference is the anointing you sit under. You've even come to the place where you believe that that sickness is God's will for you. Some of you are getting convinced that God has sovereignly chosen to not help you. You've come to the place where you tolerate things that you are redeemed from. And the reason is nobody is challenging you to say, stand on your redemption. And exercise your covenant right. Okay, 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 okay. Let me, let me leave this alone. But, but, but you know why that has happened? That's why pastors now don't even want to lay hands on anybody because what if it don't happen? They don't even have confidence in the anointing. Yes, sir. I want to test. If I lay my hands on you, I want to see the tumors gone. I want to see your ears are open before we move on because that is the anointing. Can you say amen? 